Let's now understand certain characteristics of good fuel. Now, there, there are certain characteristics which, you know, increases the importance or the use of one type of fuel vis-a-vis -vis other. Now, in this video, we are going to understand some of these characteristics. The first characteristic is the high calorific value. We know that calorific value, as you would have understood in the previous video, is the ability of a fuel to generate kg per gram or kilojoules per gram. Okay? Now, kilojoules per gram is a representative of the quantity of heat generated per gram of fuel. So, the higher the calorific value, the higher is the quantity of heat produced by a particular fuel and therefore the lower the quantity of a fuel which is required to do a particular task. Therefore the higher calorific, calorific, therefore, the higher calorific value is an important parameter in terms of a good fuel. The second thing is the ignition temperature. As we discussed earlier, ignition temperature is the minimum temperature at which fuel catches fire or fuel burns. So this ignition temperature for a good fuel should be low, okay, but above room temperature. Now what does this mean? Now, let's say you have a fuel X, okay? Let's say the room temperature is 25 degree. Now, if the temperature or the ignition temperature of this fossil or fuel X is such that it catches fire at 23 degree, this is not desirable. Why? I mean, this will catch fire at its will, isn't it? I mean, you never know when sitting in the room, this fuel X may catch fire. So therefore, it has to be necessarily above the room temperature. So let's say if it is 30 degree, then and if the room temperature is 25, this is not likely to catch fire. Therefore, the ignition temperature of a fuel should be low, but above the room temperature. Otherwise, it will run the risk of catching fire. Okay, now let's move down to the third value. Release heat in controlled manner. So it should not be that if you, let's say you have a particular thing, you burn it and it all, all of a sudden starts giving big flames. No. I mean, can you imagine if, you know, you were having a stove on which you were cooking food, if this stove itself is going to give this big flames, then can you cook food? No, you'll be burnt yourself. So the heat release has to be in a controlled manner. It should not go berserk within seconds. Because if it does, then it's not a good fuel. It always runs the risk of getting into dangers. That's the third quality of a good food, fuel. Next is cheap and easy availability. Of course, if the fuel is very costly, then it's not available to all the people. And this is more so if you would have heard about the recent things that the fuel in the aviation sector is pretty expensive. So therefore, it's not available to anyone and everyone. It's only the bigger guys who can afford it. And the last thing is, it should be safe and easy 
to handle and store. So let's say you have goods versus you have petrol. If you have to transport goods for a marriage occasion, you will need, let's say, two trucks or maybe even more. Whereas for petrol, you can even get a can which contains some 200 liters and that can be transported to the marriage site where it can be used for cooking food. So from that perspective, is it, it is easier to store petrol, to transport petrol and handling it. Handling, of course, is easier in case of woods. Because if you spill over or leave the tap open, the entire petrol will just flow out. So these are the characteristics which count for a good fuel.